Welcome to Everything Life and Real Estate. Let's get started with our hosts, Linda McKissick and Dana Gentry. Welcome to Everything Life and Real Estate. Kissy. And I'm Dana Gentry. I worry that you're going to forget who you are. And I'm thinking <laughs> Phil Harry uh, and his new book, which, by the way, Gary, your book history is going through such turmoil. And so I have Gary, is it Motter's Head? Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Great. Okay, good. Well, uh, why don't you tell us, Gary, what about you? I know you're a coach with Strategic Coach. Why don't you tell us about you and tell us why you wrote it? Yeah, well, you know, it, it was, it's was. it been an interesting ride in some respects. And uh, as we, we entered into the pandemic, actually, just before, I got really enamored with the idea of 2020. So this was in January of 2020. And the idea of hindsight and foresight and all that stuff. And I said, well, our business was 20 years old at that point. And I said, you know, what if we could take what we'd learned in the last 20 years and make it apply to the next 20 years. Sort of a crazy idea. And so uh, I started working on it and about partway through, that's when everything kind of shut down. In fact, for me, actually, because I also work with China, we, we actually saw the, the, the impact of COVID-19 in the middle of January. So we were just starting to come out of it after sort of an eight-week shutdown when the rest of the world shut down. So we I said, well, all right, the world's now different than what we had. And I finished it off and then I let it sit because we just clearly had to go and focus on what was keeping everything alive, keeping everything going, what was happening for we have business that was to be shut down or not shut down. So the manuscript was mostly written by June of 2020. And I, as it so happened in April of 2020, was also my wife and my 40th anniversary and we were supposed to go to Barbados sandals do the whole thing you know and uh, so I paid for the trip of course a couple of weeks before everything shut down and so that all got delayed so finally we re-got our trip in two and a half years later in November of 2022 so I took the manuscript with me and I delayed till the very end of it all and said I don't know I didn't, is this going to be worthwhile so I started to read it on the beach and I said because if it doesn't hold up, Linda, if it doesn't hold up after what we've been through, and I want to talk about what's going to happen over the next 20 years, it doesn't deserve to go anywhere else. It's something that was nice, and you just put it away and say, yeah, you spent the effort. But surprisingly to me, it made sense. In fact, I felt it made more sense because, as you kind of pointed out and as we see, the world is continuing to change. It's continuing to to devolve. It was a globalization world before, which we took advantage of. It's now becoming deglobalized a lot more instability, certainly economic instability that we're seeing and changes uh, people, whether they come back to work or not back to work in the real estate business. I know you talked about some of the changes that were happening. So my feeling was that this was going to continue to go on. And therefore, can we clear the noise, all the things and the speed that everything is happening and, and focus on things that we could say for true? And it, it really came to an expression that we used uh, at the beginning of the book, um, about change. And it's a quote to Jeff Bezos um, from Amazon. And he, everyone says, everyone asks me, what's going to change? What are the things we look for? And he said, you know, the more important question is what isn't going to change. Mm -hmm. And that really, mm -hmm. really resonated with me because he says, you can't build a business on what's going to change all the time. You have to build it on what isn't going to change. So in mm -hmm. a lot of ways, Linda, was, as I look back on it, that was really the kind of the driving force for me to say, what isn't going to change? How do we think about technology? And, and since I'm an engineer by training and technology, I've known about 3D printing. And I ask people, you know how long 3D printing has been around? It's over 40 years. Wow. It hasn't mm. been adopted yet in mainstream because it's not ready. Mm -hmm. And so I said, well, why do we worry about technology? Because oh, all these things that are happening, you know, AI is a big deal right now, but AI is the worst it's ever going to be. So do we need to jump on the board now or can we wait? So mm -hmm. the point with me was, how do we filter the information that's coming to us? How do we look at it from a perspective from our own side of things so that we don't get overwhelmed by what's going on and can be able to move forward with some confidence and having a direction? And I felt that's what happened to me. Uh, I felt from the 20 years, and I've also coached over that same period of time, that I felt coming from that, how can I help you know, myself, help my own team, help the people around me? And in general, how can we help them think about the world that they're in in such a way that it, they can be positive about it and uh, not be not be paralyzed by things that are going on that m may or may be outside of their control. 
Yeah. So I kind of took a, a, actually I put, uh, because my book is in Texas uh, and arrived while I was here in San Diego, I put into PI, which is, uh, I think it's I'm not really sure. I don't know what it stands for, but I'm using it. So I put in kind of the keynotes from your book and your book is called Nimble Future, which I think is so appropriate. Um, well, and one of the things, yeah, it's a great title, especially right. Yeah. Don't you feel like you have to be each year causes us to need to be more and more nimble. And Gary, just so you know, in our industry right now, we've had, um, you know, major, um, uh, I don't know what you call the attorneys that don't chase ambulances, but they chase it's kind of the same thing. Um, but we've had some attorneys uh, file class action lawsuits in the real estate industry about the practice of, uh, in advance, Dana, correct me if I say this wrong, uh, paying the buyer's commission and advertising it and things like that. Ways we've done it for God, probably, I don't know, hundreds of years. I don't know, uh, 40 that I've been in. And so mm -hmm. it's got our agents really spooked about, you know, some of yeah. them are even actually getting out before the ruling is actually, and of course the DOJ is going to make some different changes, could make it worse, could make it better, who knows. Um, but we've got mm -hmm. agents getting out of the business completely before the ruling is even actually permanent. Mm -hmm. So when you say, Engaging with the future by being proactive and taking calculated risk. How does um, it, it's a calculated risk? I'm sure because the because things are changing so much. You, you know, uh, Linda, we, you've been around a long time, Dana, and you said type up being in the real estate business for 19 years. I don't care what business it's been in, but it, it's really important to have a, have a longer term perspective and. I've just come to accept that there are going to be other regulations. There are going to be other rules that's going to try and stop us from doing things that we've done before. And we always have a choice with that. One of the chapters in the book, is it fear or faith? I mean, what do you want to do? Are you going to be afraid of what's happening? Or are you going to go and say, I'm going to figure out how to make this work? Because yeah. let's, let's be let's talking about things that are fundamental. In your world, people are always going to buy and sell homes. They're always going to buy yeah. and sell properties. And they're going to need somebody to do that because we can't do it. So yep. because, you know, maybe it's like the book, who moved my cheese? Okay, because the cheese got moved, because the because that got moved, does that take away the need for you? You? Absolutely not. What it does, it says it allows those who are smart and figure out how to work it can say, well, maybe I don't make the same much. I don't make the same commission. It's not quite as easy as it was before. But maybe it opens up a door to say, we can bring another value that we couldn't charge for before. Yeah. Because of mm -hmm. what we do. But on the surface, it looks like, well, this was easy and it was laid out and here's the book and here's the 6%, 5% or whatever the number was. And now I don't have that. I don't have mm. that rule. Somebody wants to challenge me. Well, you know, Linda, we've been around Dana too long enough to know that anytime somebody puts in a regulation, there's always a way around it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they can never be ahead. They'll always be behind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So exactly. our opportunity is to be ahead. Our opportunity is to be ahead. And that's why when I say, look at your past, reinterpret your past. And make bring only bring forward from the past the things that'll help you for the future eject all the rest of it protect your present because if we're not present to where we are we can't be aware of what's happening and then with that knowledge the future's not written yet so let's go have a hand in that future somebody's mm -hmm. going to change things on us all the time but i'm linda i know a bit about your story and the background and what you've had to do and how you had to change and what you came out of being stronger for it i think that's what we need to do, but that's the role that both of you have in your world to bring that kind of perspective and confidence back to um, your marketplace. Yeah, so true. So, um, it, and I'm sure your industry, our, our in-house attorneys, every industry gets it. It's just our number came up, <laughs> our ticket, because I guess there's always been the the attorneys that are looking for some way to to or or decide that something should be done a different way. What about your industry? Um, have you had many changes? I think it's freaking a lot of people well, out. I, I wake up in the morning and you read what's happening. Is there something happened with the exchange rate? Did something happen with the price of oil? Mm -hmm. uh, the biggest one was when President Trump said, we're going to put a duty on products from China. We immediately went from zero to 25% 
and we had to find and we had we had containers on the water at that point in time that were going to be hit with the duty, even though the pricing and everything else had all been, been negotiated. And we had two weeks, you know, we had, we had people cancel their orders because of the panic that took place. And this took place in August of 2018. And so, you know, we don't, it doesn't matter. Even when that ship ran into the bridge in Baltimore, even though oh. we don't have somebody in the West Coast, our costs changed immediately that day. So we, does something happen in my world? I kind of go and say, well, what doesn't happen in the world? What isn't, what isn't changing for me? And, and you know, we both know Dan, Dan Sullivan, a strategic coach, and, you know, a couple of years ago when people were all getting out of the pandemic and say, oh, now we're going to get back to normal. And Dan goes, well, what if it was like this for the next 25 years? And I was there and I said to Dan, I'm, I'm okay because it's been like this for me for the last 20 years, so I don't expect it to change anytime soon. So, you know, I think the, the key is, is that the reason for being nimble is we just, we just have to be willing to be able to be smart about what we're doing, recognize what's going on, and how do we help the people around us? You know, you've got a whole whack of agents and different agencies you work with. How do we help them out? And I know that's a big, big part of what you do, Linda. And so that's where the value is going to come from, you know. Gary, what qualities do you feel like leaders and people possess differently than uh, for the ones that, like, they can see the future and they can be nimble? Versus maybe the ones that can't. Well, I think I think a lot of it Dana, has to do with your confidence, and mm. and the thing is, it's not. Some people have some people have that ability to think out into the future that others don't have. We all have unique abilities, and some do, and some don't. But the the difference is, is I think can we can that leader almost be like an observer of their own life? Mm. Can you can you kind of rise up? And look down. You never seen those overhead cameras in a car, and they can see everything around you. And mm-hmm. even while you're sitting inside the car, can you do that with your own life? Can you go back and evaluate what's taken place, and put it into perspective that allows you to bring um, that kind of perspective to other people? Mm-hmm. And I think that's really the the key thing. Is we're not any smarter than anybody else. It's just that we have the willingness and the ability to look at ourselves and reinterpret, as I say, reinterpret our past, re- look at what's going on and say, now, not only from our own perspective, but how can we use that to help other people think about mm-hmm. what's going on in their world? Mm-hmm. And Linda, you know who I immediately think of is Gary Keller. I mean, we always say Gary mm-hmm. has like this magic crystal ball that he can see always 20 years ahead into the future. But really, I think exactly what Gary, what this, this Gary just said about that Gary um, is he has looked at his whole life over the years and he has great perspective. And then he's able to share with all of us what he feels like is, you know, happening in the future. That's a, I think that's a talent. I mean, I, I want to get better at that all the time. Mm-hmm. Well, well you know, I think the not. more changes you've gone through, the better you get at understanding change is normal. Yeah. Provided you're willing to learn from all of that. Yeah. Well, that's the key. Because yeah. some people get beaten down by all the change. Mm-hmm. Yeah and get overwhelmed by that. I know you don't, Linda. I can see by the look on your face, you don't. I mean, we take that as yeah. a challenge in some respects. But even 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 us, we kind of lose our energy every now and again and have to you know, recharge and, and rethink about what's happening. So so Dana, just to, just to a point, I've, I've come to realize in my mind that in thinking about it, for people to think big, like a Gary Keller would think big, is that I think we need three things. We need to have time. We need to have time yeah. to be able to think. We need to have space, which is like mental space to be able to do that. And the third thing is we need to have energy. And if you don't have those three things, it, you continue to narrow your world down to it become mm-hmm. smaller to match all that. But the more that we can can take that time to be, provide perspective, to have space in our own minds that we've got room to put something new that's in there and the energy, because the brain and all that thing takes a lot of energy, yeah. um, then I think we can do that. And again, you have to have the willingness and the desire to go out and do that. Yeah. And other people, Linda, what has Dan said about us as entrepreneurs are willing to take control of our future and our income. And there are a lot of mm-hmm. people who aren't willing to do either one of those two things, mm-hmm. which is okay. So good. Yeah. And you make a really good point, Gary. I think the first thing that happens is the wind gets knocked out of people. Uh, they kind of, you know, lose their energy. And I've actually seen people who never got it back. And to me, that's like the saddest thing ever, you know. Um, yeah. But I think 
I think just letting them know that that's normal. You're going to have a little phase of you feel like you've been kicked in the gut, but you should be resilient enough that you bounce back after that and go, okay, this is reality. I'm looking forward. Yep. Absolutely. You know, you bring up, you bring up the wind analogy and I, one of the things that I always like and, and talk about in the workshops is that like a sailor, and I used to do some sailing when I was young, not a little bit competitive, not, not that much. I was never very that good, good at it. But the thing about sailing is, is that we can't, we cannot, we cannot predict the wind and we cannot change the wind more than anything else. But what mm -hmm. we can do is we can adjust our sails and we can adjust the direction that we have. And the one thing about sailing, if you watch, you can see the ripples on the water of when the wind might be coming through. And how do you go take advantage of that? Well, you know, I don't think life is an awful lot different than that. So we can get blown over by it. Or we can get overwhelmed by it. The winds are too strong. Or we can find a way to harness it. And, and, mm -hmm. But you have to be open, receptive, and be thinking about what's happening and watching. Mm -hmm. Gary, what when do you say the two things? That that um, Dan Sullivan says entrepreneurs are willing to take control of something in their income. What was the first one? I missed it. Willing to take control of their future. Take, oh, take, future. Really take, okay. take responsibility for their future and, yeah. and control over their income. Yeah. That's good. Yep. Then just go ahead. Gary, one of the key, key things you said in the book is building a resilient organization that can weather any storm. What are the key things to building a resilient uh, organization or how do you know if your organization is ready and resilient enough. Good question. Well, yeah, I, 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 and Linda, I believe it starts with us at the top. And we clearly set the tone for what happens. How we react to a situation, if we act, react really negatively and we go beat up on the situation or blame somebody else, um, then that's the kind of behavior we're teaching, no, no different than your own children from that perspective. So I think for one, we, we all, those of us as leaders, need to have that resiliency built in, which means you need to look after yourself. If you're always strung out, always at the edge, you're not going to have that. So, so that's number one. Um, the second thing is actually teaching your team how to deal with it. And I think that can be done. I think you can take people who aren't, aren't entrepreneurs. They don't need to be entrepreneurs. But to understand that there's, things are going to happen that we can't control, and then how do we control them? Um, we have co we have tools and coach like the experience transformers you can work on and so but really being very methodical about how you go through this and how you solve a problem and but don't you solve the problem have the team mm -hmm. help solve that problem together mm -hmm. so they know that and we call it we call it inside our organization a crisis muscle mm -hmm. and so like any muscle you've got to exercise it and so we, we kind of joke now because, okay, what's happening today and what do we need to do? And, you know, we don't know what's going to happen when the phone rings. And, uh, and, and so, and a lot of it's outside of our control. And so, mm -hmm. so when you've got a crisis, you've got to go back and say, I always say a couple of things. What have we lost? If we haven't lost anything yet, then what do we need to do to make sure we don't lose something? And what action can we take? And how quickly do we need to take it? So mm -hmm. again, for just keeping... Maybe a word is perspective for me and certainly perspective from our end, but helping them think through what the, what the solutions are and uh, allowing them to make the mistakes so they need to make the mistakes, but so that they learn, that they can deal with it. That's awesome. Linda, Linda, that reminds me of what Dr. Ryan Smith said. I think it was at the summit where like a little bit of stress is good for you because it gets mm -hmm. you like gets your, you know, whatever the chemicals are in your brain, but then it gets you to like thinking and being creative and figuring out those different things. And I think that's good. The whole crisis thing, um, the crisis muscle. So she said, yeah, I love that. I think that's genius. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, Dana, without, without fear, there's no excitement. Mm. <laughs> true so it's yeah. okay it's okay yeah yeah but but i always say fears false expectations appearing real yeah so, i love that so okay yeah so well and i think uh, even dan talks about how when older people take fear out of their life they start to you know build a smaller box and and honestly just die and when when he told that analogy in one of our coach sessions, I actually could visualize people who had made their box so small because everything mm -hmm. here and they just stopped doing. Yeah. Well, I, you know, it, the interesting is you say that because I watched my, my parents who passed away and my wife's parents who passed away that when they retired, they always worry about something. Well, 
they used to be worried about the work, worried about other things. And now they're worried about going to the grocery store and uh, when, when they got to put gas in the car or whatever it might be. And so we're always going to worry about something. It's just a question of the, the as you say, the scope of the world that we, we choose to, to think yeah. about. Yeah. So true. Now, Gary, how long have you been? You're a coach for strategic coach, right? How long have you done that? And what great um, things you noticed about entrepreneurs um, in all your time of coaching? Uh, one, I've, I've coached for 28 years now since 1996. And uh, that's over 3000 people, I guess, over that time. And I know 700 plus workshops. I, I don't keep track of the numbers, but something like that, a lot. And uh, what's changed is that I feel that that entrepreneurism is far more accepted now than it was 30 years ago. In fact, my father was an entrepreneur and, and I would say he would be 110 to, today if he was still alive this year. So it's been quite a while ago. Uh, but when he became when he was an entrepreneur, it was a time when you became an entrepreneur because you couldn't hold a job. And so mm -hmm. I, I look at how that's evolved even from that time. We're going back more than half a century now to today. So I think entrepreneurs are far more accepted. I think there's a, a recognition that that entrepreneurs bring a value to the world and we bring the change and we bring the needed new ideas and opportunities. And the thing that's happened the most over this period of time has been the Internet. Because mm -hmm. to be able to be a big organization or an international organization or have a big impact, you needed a big infrastructure. And that's why there were big governments and that's why there were big companies. And I worked for Exxon and I worked for DuPont before I got onto my own. But with the internet, now the internet provided all the infrastructure that we needed to be. And so that really opened up the world of opportunity for entrepreneurs. AI is gonna do something similar, but don't jump in too early because it's gonna provide another level of infrastructure and capability that's not required by a number of people. So I'd say that's one of the biggest changes. And the other one is how well prepared they are. Because it's being more accepted that people can now, um, there's a lot more material that's written, particularly from Strategic Coach. There's a lot more being written about it. So it's far more acceptable in the world today. Um, but there's still only 5% of the population that we think are, are really entrepreneurs. A lot of people may call themselves entrepreneurs or, or self-employed, and that's not quite the same thing. So, mm. Mm -hmm. so true. That's, that's a good point. Uh, you know, and oh, I, I, remember, I remember even feeling, you feel, you felt like, something was wrong with you or you were different or no one understood why you were the way you are. You couldn't even understand why you were the way you were, right? Well, I, I started in the tire recycling business and I walked out of a good job at DuPont, which I could probably work in my way towards senior management and everything else and said, I can't do this anymore. And, and started over my, my, my wife was now on maternity leave. Well, my accountant said at the end of that year, it's amazing how, little money you can live on, right? And as you start things out, why did I do all that? You know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of story behind that one. But, you know, the thing is, we just, you're driven in a certain way. Um, my, do my daughter, Christy, is an entrepreneur. And my, I have a son. My son works with me. She's driven that way. He's not. It's just mm -hmm. we get built that way. Well, you make a good point because a lot of our realtors are actually self, all of them are self-employed until they learn yeah. to set it up like a business. What do you think is the key difference between the ones that are actually entrepreneurial and the ones that are employed? Well, if you're a, if you're a, if I if I also use the other term solopreneur, somebody who's on their own or self-employed, you really don't rely on anybody else. You you allow there's a an infrastructure that's already built. There'd be an inf infrastructure for Keller Williams in there and behind there for whatever office and agency that they're with. And so they're willing to let all that take place and, then, and that they're eat what they kill, for example. Um, and that's okay. That, but, they're, but they haven't taken the next step. You see, there's, when you go and you hire other people and you set up your own office and you go and are willing to put yourself out there, you take on a different level of risk. You pick up a different mm -hmm. level of reward. But you have to step back from your income in a lot of ways to be able to create the, the infrastructure and the opportunity. And I think that's what separates entrepreneurs. Not all entrepreneurs are great at, at delegating with, to other people. That's what we work on and talk about a lot. But still, the willingness to go out that you don't have to do it all yourself and rely on other people, I think is a big separator between uh, self-employed and, and entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good I'm way to really excited to read your book. 
Assemble future. I'll be ordering it today. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. It's it's now available. Amazon was kind of, Kindle was kind of screwed up, but it's all available to go right now. Appreciate that. I uh, I'm almost done, Linda, uh, with John's new High Road Leadership book, yep. um, and it is very good. Oh my gosh, so good. So that so Nimble Future will be my my next read right after this. Um, Gary, I just have one more question that doesn't necessarily have to do with the book, but does have to do with strategic coaching. And I only know a little bit about strategic coaching just because I've been blessed to get to be around Linda. <laughs> and we've had Dan on the podcast and a couple of workshops and things like that. But um, one of the things I think that is so great about it and what Dan mm -hmm. has created are the tools, like his one pager worksheets. And I'm just wondering, do you have a favorite tool from strategic coaching that you use? Yeah, to me, the favorite tool that I use, other than the positive focus, which we use every meeting, so okay, yeah, yep. so, I, so I take that into account, is I really like the fast filter. Um, it's a shortened version, what we call the sprint version of the impact filter. And it oh, says, yep. okay. what, what are we trying to do? Best case, worst case, and the key results. Um, and I also have my team do it. So we do it for meetings. We do it for our own team events that we're having. Um, oftentimes, I'll do it for for external and sometimes I'll send it to people and say, Hey, this is, this is what I think is going to happen. So that's really, again, being a nine quick start, high quick start, it's easy, gets out. And the other thing that it does, it allows me to express in words what I'm thinking because yeah. otherwise we don't really articulate all that well. And I like yeah. when other people do it for me because then I know what they're thinking. Yeah. So that was the fast future. Fast filter. Oh, fa fast filter. I mean, fast filter. Yes. Okay. Because I've used the impact um, filter a lot. Uh, the impact so filter. Have... This is just a shortened version, so it okay. takes a little less Perfect. time. Nice. Love it. I love the positive focus too. That's such a great one. Awesome. Yeah, I uh, I have a call with Dan on the second. Uh, so I got the fast filter. I have to fill out before by deadline before we have the conversation. So I love that. I should. I should learn from it and use that up when people want to have a conversation. Well, I, I asked good. Dan, I'd asked Dan if he'd do an endorsement for the book and he did. And so they need to see the whole book and the manuscript, which I got in all had to be approved. And I also had to put a fast filter out there. So, and, and, and I did get one form. He's right at the beginning. So he got some. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, is there anything we should have asked you, but we did not ask you? Yeah. I, I, I'd say the only thing that I'd like people to do is really, is is do, is do engage in the future and recognize they can have an impact on what goes on because the future is not written yet and don't let it happen to you mm -hmm. and um mm -hmm. whatever you need to do to be able to give yourself the confidence to do that if it's reading through the book picking up things use it as a reference from time to time or whatever else you might read or talk to i really feel it's really important right now that that we all don't let the future just happen to us take an active mm -hmm. role in what you want I think that's far more satisfying for each individual and and for the people around you. Gary, which uh, which co if if some because you know I'm a big I'm I, I'm trying to be the number one recruiter for for a strategic coach also not only just Keller Williams but but strategic coach. So which program do you coach? Signature or 10x? And uh, if they want to find you, follow you, reach out to you, how, where how do they do that? Well, one you I coach both the signature program and the 10x program. Um, fortunately for me, because I live not far from Toronto, I'm in the Toronto office and there are workshops that are there. And since you've asked, I am starting another signature program in August. I'm um, nice. not sure when this comes out, in the middle of August or so. Uh, how to find me? Um, I'd say we've got a, the nimblefuture.com has a web page that people can come to and have a look at. I do a podcast called Clarity Generates Confidence, and that can be found where any, wherever podcasts are found. And also, to um, if you go to my business website, gcpindustrial.com, you can find that information. And also Strategic Coach. I mean, they are, all the coaches have a bio on Strategic Coach, so again, strategiccoach.com. Linda, I don't have many places I can hide, so that's where I can. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, Gary, thank Linda. you. Linda, you your uh, goal to be number one must be why I'm getting a weekly call from Reggie at Strategic well, Coach. <laughs> probably, Re Reggie knows. Reggie knows. I'm like, uh, okay, I know who exactly this program is for. But it's your job, Reggie, to bug the crap out of until they do it. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> he he will wear me down eventually. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm just I think he's your number one number one person. 
Uh, awesome. Well, Gary, thank you so much. Really do appreciate it. And remember, if you have not hit the subscribe button, please go ahead and do that now. And if you have a, uh, a topic or a question or a concern that you'd like to discuss on our podcast or a guest that you think would be a great guest for us, be sure to reach out to us at info at everything life and real estate. And Gary, at the next free zone uh, frontier with uh, with Dan. And I'll see you next week. Yep. Awesome. Sounds good. Well, thank you, Gary. Great. Forward. Thank you. Thank you, Dana. Thanks, thank Linda. You. Be sure to subscribe for more business strategies and tactics to inspire you to live an abundant real estate life. Don't forget to rate and review so we can bring you the best content. Find this and other valuable information at everythinglifeandrealestate.com.